Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti, Baribharti, Sanjari Harti, Leelaya. Vishvesham Satchidanandam, Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat, Charikarti, Baribharti, Sanjari Harti, Leelaya. In this course, we are concentrated in the study on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the major types of Samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahubrihi and Dvandva as stated also in the same order in the Ashtadhyayi. Tatpurusha Samasa is by far the most productive in nature in Sanskrit. Tatpurusha Samasa also has got several varieties. In comparison with the other samasas, these are quite uh, few. Also, in the Ashtadhyayi, Panini has composed number of sutras to explain Tatpurusha samasa, which is in comparison with the other samasas is quite big. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be stated in brief in the following manner. We have X and Y, two entities, and they are independent entities, they are separate entities in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent. But they are interrelated. So the speakers of Sanskrit have thought about merging them together and the compounding process then begins and one output is generated in the form of one unit and the nature of this output is x, y but this is one unit in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent. There is ekarthi bhava over here and all the three features are present namely Aikarthya, Aikapadya and Aikasparya. Now the speciality of Tatpurusha Samasa is that in this XY, Y acts as the head of this unit XY, one unit. Y is the head. What it implies is that when XY as one unit is related with the other units in the sentence, that interrelation happens only through Y. If that interrelation happens through X without going through Y, such an interrelation, such a compound is considered to be an exception. And that is noted in the tradition as Asamartha Samasa. We have also seen many varieties of the Tatpurusha Samasa, namely the Vibhakti Tatpurusha, then we saw the Karma Dharaya, including the Dvigu, then we studied Ekadeshi Samasa, followed by Nay Tatpurusha Samasa, then Pradi Samasa, followed by Gati Samasa. Right now we are studying Upapada Samasa, Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa. And this is also one of the highly productive subtypes of Tatpurusha Samasa. This Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa is stated by the Sutra Upapadam Ating. 
this is 2 to 19. This has got upapadam as 1 slash 1, meaning the word designated as upapada by 3192, tatra upapadam saptami stham. Now this pratama vibhakti assigns the term upasarjana to it as directed by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then the sutra upasarjanam purvam ensures that this upapada is occupying the initial position of the samasa, the purva nipata takes place. The word a thing which is in one one means which is not a thing, that means which is not a tinganta. Words continued are sup and sahasupa and also samartha padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is that any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. So the questions are, what is the need of the word a thing in this particular sutra? What is achieved by this negation? Because when we make not a tinganta a condition for this particular sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. Because tinganta and subanta, they are similar and also different. So when you say a thing, it means thing bhinna thing sadrusha, which is a sub, that is a subanta. This is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the word sup and sahasupa. Therefore, we are forced to think that in this particular sutra, the basic condition of sup and sahasupa does not apply. Rather, sup and saha only will apply. Supa does not apply. So now, the structure of the output derived by this particular sutra can be shown in the following manner. So when we have the compound and alaukika vigraha, we'll be having something like this. There is purvapada with a pratipadika plus su, for example, plus the second member of the compound having dhatu plus krit as its constituents. And there is no sup at the end of the second member. So now, we'll have the finally derived output as the pratipadika in the purvapada plus dhatu plus krit, which is the second member of the compound. This is what we have witnessed when we derive words like grihastha, goda, kambalada, kumbhakara, etc., etc. We have studied some sutras and now let us continue studying some more sutras. Right now we are studying the suffix ach which is added after verbal root ru etc. Now the next sutra is arahaha which states that the suffix ach is added after the verbal root arha. So the meaning of this sutra is that the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root arha when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of karma. Repeat, the suffix ach is added in the sense of karta to the verbal root arha when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of karma. Now the verbal root arha which means puja or worship is the one that is intended here. So pujaya means in the sense of worship. Now one who respects the worship. In this sense when we have pujam arhati as the laukika vigraha we have puja being the karma of arhati and then there is semantic relatedness 
so we add the suffix ach over here and we get the form pujarah as the finally derived output pujarah and then pujaraha similarly one who respects the garland mala marhati that is malarah and also malaraha here we are adding the suffix ach after the verbal root arah so pujaraha vari sudana in the shrimad bhagavad gita has got the word pujarah pujarah is derived in the fashion shown on the slide in the explanation of this sutra arha 3212 we then proceed further and the next sutra is stambakarna yoho rami japo 3213 There are two padas in the sutra, Stambakarna Yoho and Rami Japoho. Stambakarna Yoho is 7 slash 2, indicating that these are the upapadas. So the meaning is when the words Stamba, a post, and Karna, an ear, are the upapadas. Rami Japoho is 6 slash 2, which is actually 5 slash 2, which means immediately after the verbal roots Ram to enjoy, and jap to recite now there are two upapadas and there are two verbal roots so there is this yatha sankhya nyaya stated by padini in the sutra yatha sankhyam anudesha samanam this works and then stamb is associated with the verbal root rama and karna is associated with the verbal root jap this also is true about some earlier sutras but we mention them here for some specific additional highlight now the words continued are dhato ho 3191 meaning immediately after a verbal root pratyaya from 311 tatropapadam saptami stham 3192 kridating 3193 kartari krit 3467 This says that the meaning of the suffix ach is karta. Supi from seven one. Supi from three two four. Now the yatha sankhya nyaya is invoked over here because there is a specific meaning that is to be conveyed as an output of the overall compound. The statement is hasti sucha kayo riti vaktavyam. so stamb is linked with ram and the overall output of the compound after adding the suffix ach to the verbal root ram would be hasti similarly karna and jap these are interrelated and when we add the suffix ach to the verbal root jap the compound should denote suchak so now we have the meaning one who enjoys a post and this should be an elephant so the laukika vigraha is stambhe ramate and now the alaukika vigraha stambha plus ngi plus rama plus ach and this sutra stambha karna yo rami japo ho adds the suffix ach upapadam i think states the samasa so there is samasa saudnya then there is pratipadika saudnya then supodhatu pratipadika yo ho applies or is about to apply and is about to delete this suffix ni when the sutra tatpurushe kriti bahulam 6314 applies and says that this ni over here is not deleted so there is a look of this ni and in that case we get the compound finally derived compound form as stambhirama now stambhirama actually could be anybody who enjoys a particular post but the statement that we added earlier says that the output is referring to an elephant this is narrowing down the generic meaning that is generated by the overall process similarly when we have the meaning intended to be expressed namely a jealous who talks in ear 
करणे जपति दिस इज द लौकिक विग्रह करणे जपति सो कर्ण इज द सबस्टेटम ऑफ द ऐक्शन ऑफ रिसिटिंग रिसाइटिंग स्तंभ इज द सबस्टेटम ऑफ एन्जॉइंग and so there is semantic relatedness in both the cases so now we have semantic relatedness and therefore now the samasa is possible and the sutra stambha karna yo rami japo ho states the suffix ach after the verbal root jap with the karna as the upapada so now upapada mathing assigns the samasa saudnya and so samasa saudnya happens then pratipadika saudnya happens there is alaukika vigraha there karna plus ni plus japa plus ach after the pratipadika saudnya happens so podhatu pratipadika yo is applied is about to be applied and that is where tatpurushe krati bahulam plays a role and says that in this particular situation the saptami vibhakti is not deleted and there is a look of the saptami vibhakti so we have karna plus ni plus jap plus a and the finally derived output is karne jap now karne jap naturally means one who talks in air but as the previous statement suggested it is not referring to anybody who talks in air but only somebody who is a jealous person suchak who talks in ear so karne jap is a finally derived compound form denoting a particular sense as a whole as a compound we have also said tatpurushe kriti bahulam plays an important role in the aluk of the vibhakti now the next sutra is shami dhato saudnyayam 3 to 14 there are three padas in the sutra shami dhato ho and saudnyayam shami is 7/1 indicating that this is an upapada when the word sham happiness or welfare is the upapada dhato ho is 5/1 which means immediately after a verbal root saudnyayam is 7/1 when a term is denoted by the compound so the meaning of the compound is denoting a term words continued are dhato ho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyaya 311 tatropapadam saptami stham 3192 krudating 3193 kartari krut 3467 where the meaning of the suffix ach is stated to be karta the suffix ach also continues from 3 to 9 so the overall meaning of the sutra is that the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to any verbal root when the upapada is sham so we repeat the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to any verbal root when the upapada is sham so if we have the meaning to be expressed namely one who creates happiness sham karoti so we have sham plus am and kru plus ach and then there will be samasa saudnya pratipadika saudnya subluk and then ru in kru will be substituted by ar and finally we'll get the output shankar similarly one who speaks happiness sham vadati and we'll derive the same format and the finally derived compound output would be shamvada and this can happen with any verbal root which is semantically linked with sham so we can have shankara shamvada etc as examples so this sutra looks highly productive now we go to the next sutra adhikarane shete hai this is 3 to 15 this sutra has got two padas adhikarane and shete hai adhikarane is 
मीनिंग वेन द अधिकरण इज उपपद शेते हे इज फाइव स्लैश वन ऑफ शेती विच इज अ रेफरेंस टू द वर्बल रूट शी शी मीन्स टू स्लीप सो शेते हे मीन्स इमिडिएटली आफ्टर द वर्बल रूट शी मीनिंग टू स्लीप वर्ड्स कंटिन्यूड आर धातो हो फ्रॉम थ्री वन नाइंटी वन मीनिंग इमिडिएटली आफ्टर अ वर्बल रूट प्रत्यय थ्री वन वन अच्छ थ्री टू नाइन तत्रोपदम सप्तमी स्थम फ्रॉम थ्री वन नाइंटी टू कृदतिंग थ्री वन नाइंटी थ्री कर्तरी कृत थ्री फोर सिक्सटी सेवन एंड हियर इट सेज द मीनिंग ऑफ द सफिक्स अच इज करता सो नाउ द मीनिंग ऑफ द सूत्र इज दैट इमीडिएटली आफ्टर द वर्बल रूट शी द सफिक्स अच इज एडेड वेन एन उपपद is related with the action of sleeping as adhikarana so now if we have the meaning for example one who sleeps in the sky khe shete that is the laukika vigraha so now adhikarane shete he will apply and the suffix ach will be added to the verbal root she उपपदम अतिंग विल हैव द उपपद समास एंड देन समास सौज्ञ अप्लाइज देन प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञ अप्लाइज देन सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो अप्लाइज एंड डिलीट्स नी सो वी हैव ख प्लस जीरो प्लस शी प्लस अ देन वी हैव सार्वधातु का अर्थ धातु का यो प्लेइंग अ रोल एंड शी इज सब्सिट्यूटेड बाय शे सो वी हैव ख प्लस जीरो प्लस शे प्लस अ and then by the application of the sandhi rule h o y a v a y a v a h k is substituted by sh a y a and the finally derived compound output is kh sh a y a kh sh a y a which means the same thing as k s h e t e one who sleeps in the sky similarly if the meaning to be expressed is one who sleeps in a cave we have the laukika vigraha garte shete now adhikarane shete he applies the suffix ach is added after the verbal root she upapadam ating plays the role and so we have garta plus ni plus she plus ach as the alaukika vigraha samasa saudhnya takes place pratipadika saudhnya takes place supo dhatu pratipadika yo applies so you get garta plus 0 plus she plus a and then you get garta plus 0 plus she plus a by the application of sarva dhatu ka ardha dhatu ka yo ho then you apply the sandhi rule and you get garta shaya as the finally derived compound output khashaya as well as garta shaya there are statements on this particular sutra for example parshvadishu upasankhyanam so when parshva etc are also the upapadas the suffix ach is to be added after the verbal root she that is the meaning of this particular sutra this particular statement so when we have the laukika vigraha parshva abhyam shete one who sleeps by sides the compound output generated would be parshva shaya by undergoing the similar process stated earlier similarly udarena shete if this is the laukika vigraha one who sleeps by belly or stomach the compound output generated would be udara shaya here also we apply the same process that we saw earlier <coughs> so prushthena shete if this is the laukika vigraha the compound output generated would be prushtha shaya one who sleeps by the back the next statement available is digdha sah purvach digdhena sah shete one who sleeps with something that is body anointed दिग्धेन सह शेते नाउ दिग्ध सह इज द पूर्वपद एंड देन शी इज द 
verbal root digdhas is the upapada and she is the verbal root to which the suffix ach is added and so we get the finally derived compound output as digdha sah shaya also we have another statement uttanadishu kartrushu uttanadishu kartrushu so uttanah shete and we have uttan shaya similarly avamurdha shete and the compound output generated is avamurdha shaya so uttanah <coughs> is the karta of the action of see sleeping avamurdha is not the adhikarana is the karta of the action of sleeping so karta is the upapad similarly we have a statement girav dash chandasi so when the when the upapad is giri a mountain the suffix d is added after the verbal root she and because of d the final e of she is deleted so if the laukika vigraha is girau shete we have giri plus ni plus she plus d as the alaukika vigraha so we have giri plus ni plus she plus d as the alaukika vigraha then the samasa saudnya happens pratipadika saudnya happens supadhatu pratipadika jo applies and we have giri plus 0 plus she plus a then the statement ditva samarthya dabhasya piter lopa applies deletes the final e of she and finally we get the output girisha when we have girisha with long e in between that is a different word and compound altogether the next sutra is charestah charehe tah 3 to 16 charehe is 51 which means immediately after the verbal root char to move tah is 11 pratyayah 311 also feminine suffix ngip is added because of the marker t words continued are dhatoh tatropapadam saptamistham krudating and adhikarane adhikarane from 3 to 15 so the meaning of the sutra is that the suffix t is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root char when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of adhikarana i repeat the suffix t is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root char when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of adhikarana so if the meaning to be expressed is one who moves in the land of kuru kurushu charati as the laukika vigraha then we add the suffix t and we derive the finally derived compound output kuru char and the feminine of this would be kuru chari similarly one who moves in the land of madra we have the laukika vigraha as madreshu charati and so we add the suffix t to the verbal root char and now we get the finally derived compound output as madra char and the feminine of it would be madra chari the next sutra is bhiksha sena dayeshu cha 3217 this is very simple this means and when bhiksha sena and adaya are the upapadas which are not the adhikaranas the suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root char repeat and when bhiksha sena and adaya are the upapadas and they are not the adhikaranas the suffix ta is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root char so if you have the meaning one who moves for alms so bhiksham charati then we have 
the suffix t added and we derive the output as bhiksha chara. Similarly, one who moves into army, senam charati, and the output derived is sena chara. Similarly, one who moves having collected, when this meaning is to be expressed, we have adaya charati as the input, laukika vigraha, and the finally derived compound output is adaya charaha, adaya chara. To summarize, the semantic relation the upapadas share with the action denoted by the verbal root is manifold. Many times it is the karma or object, but sometimes it is also the adhikarana, substratum. Sometimes it is also the karta, agent. Sometimes it is also the instrument, karana. This makes the dependency within the compound multifaceted and also rich. Several similar words showing similar dependency relation with the action can be or are generated using the derivation process of compounding as stated in the Panimian grammar. We study some more Upapada Tatpurusha deriving suffixes in the coming lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.